Hi, it's your Lisa here at Bowen Library with a whole new middle grade book spotlight. So for this week, we are exploring some of our favorite middle grade authors. That's right. These are authors that, at least how I define them, they are, I, I will read anything and everything by this author. If there's a new book coming out by this author, it is on the to buy list or the to read pile as soon as it comes out. These are ones that I, I can't put down. These authors are amazing. We have some awesome nonfiction authors. We have some awesome fiction ones, a little bit of everything. So let's get started so we can discover these amazing authors. So our first one is The Great and Only Barnum. This is by Candace Fleming. Love Candace Fleming. So Candace Fleming is so incredibly talented. She does everything from picture books, middle grade books, and even she gets into YA. What I really love about the stuff that she does is she does some incredible biographies. And this, this book is no like exemption to that. It is amazing. So this is all about P.T. Barnum, who is this above over the top person who was an entertainer. And he eventually becomes known as the person who creates what's known, what would become known as the Barnum and Bailey Raylan Brothers Circus, which was known as the greatest show on earth and traveled all over the world, showing off the skilled and talented animals and part of this amazing three ring circus. But there is so much more to his story than that. And that's exactly what Candace Fleming digs into. You will go behind the scenes, you will learn how Barnum becomes like becomes the person that he, he became known as. And it wasn't always easy and he wasn't always successful, but he he never gave up and he became the world's greatest showman from his first ability to sound anything to anyone. This is filled with photos from the time, there's newspaper articles, there's advertisements. And it will make you feel so you're right back in time in the 1800s while he is alive. Again, if you love a good biography, look no further than the great only Barnum. Or there's some awesome other biographies she has done. There's, book, there's ones that she's done on Amelia Earhart. There's ones that she's done about Abraham and Mary Todd Lincoln. So I can't even list all of them. Love her. Love her biographies. This is the great and only Barnum by Candace Fleming. Two Miserable Presents by Steve Scheinkin. I love Steve Scheinkin. We've talked about, I don't know how many of Steve Scheinkin's books. Believe it or not, this is one we haven't talked about. Now, this is all about everything you've wanted to know about the Civil War and even stuff you probably didn't want to because it's gross and disgusting. But after this, you will know about it and you'll become a Civil War expert. Now, what Steve Scheinkin does in this is he starts you back before the war even starts. So you can start to get a feel for like what the tensions are and maybe what the causes and the lead ups were and what people's thoughts were about this and the feelings and what were the strategies involved. And then you will go through this conflict, especially through the eyes of the two different presidents, Jefferson Davis and Abraham Lincoln, and you will learn what they go through because it wasn't all fun and games for them. They were in fact pretty miserable the whole time. Like everything else Steve Scheinke has done, this is filled with incredible facts. It's told as a story. There's humor in it. And again, you become an expert and you can you can show everyone how incredibly smart you are. Now, there are two others he's done similar to this. There's one for the Revolutionary War and there's one for the Wild West. Highly recommend both of those as well. Again, I recommend anything by Steve Scheinkin, but this one we're talking about, Two Miserable Presidents. Great if you love learning about Civil War. Two Miserable Presidents. Refugee by Alan Gratz. Okay, I, what I love about Alan Gratz and his numerous books he has done, he has this, this unique take on historical fiction. And he's able to do it in such a way that the, the perspectives and the points of view that you read through and you, and you learn about are, are ones you've never even considered. And Refugee is, 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 is just that. And it takes a unique point of view and then it's gonna shock you in the end. Now, through the story, you read about three different kids who are refugees. There's Joseph, it's 1939, and he is a German Jew trying to get away from Cuba with his family. And then there's Isabel, and Isabel's in Cuba, and it's 1994, and her family's trying to leave Cuba because of the regime and the government pressure that's taking place at that time. And then there's another story that features his Mahmoud, who's trying to escape from his war-torn country of Syria in 2015. 
Now, each of their stories are told in alternating chapters, and you will learn you will learn in detail each of their stories, as including why they are leaving, how they are trying to leave, um, the difficulties that they're facing, and you will be left wondering as you're reading these three stories, where is this going? How is this all supposed to connect together? And as you're trying to figure that out, I just want you to keep in mind that these stories reflect things that are still happening today. There are people who are refugees today that they are forced to leave their homes, their countries because of the violence and arrest taking place there. Not on their part, but they're just forced to live in it. As you go through it, it will open your eyes to what kids around the world are experiencing or have experienced and will put you in their shoes. And this, again, will, will help you just see what it's like to be a refugee and how we can help those that need our help. Love this one. Again, though, there's when everything comes together, it'll like, you'll just sit there and be like, I didn't see that coming, but it makes total, complete sense. Highly recommend this one. This is Refugee by Alan Gratz. Again, I love anything by him as well. Incredible author. This is Refugee. The War That Saved My Life by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. This is one of my favorite books of all time. And this author is incredible. This is all about Ada. Ada's living in London and she's not allowed to leave their one room apartment up on a count of what's known as a club foot. So instead of her foot facing forward, it's like at an, at an angle, okay? It's called a club foot. Still happens today, but it can be fixed. But back in London in the 1940s, if you didn't want to get it fixed, and people didn't, you just lived with it. And her mom's ashamed of it. Now, when London starts to be bombed by Germans during the Battle of Britain, and children are sent to live in the countryside, kind of like what happens in Narnia. Like if you ever watch Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, you know, the four brothers and sisters, they were sent to go live in the countryside with their uncle. That's what was going on right here. And Ada's mother decides that she's not going to send Ada. She's just going to send her younger brother, Jamie, because she doesn't really care if Ada survives or if she dies. Ada, though, is not in favor of this. She decides she's going to take matters into her own hands and she sneaks out of the house with Jamie and she sneaks on board this train and she soon finds herself going to the countryside. And as the train stops and more kids get off and they get picked up by, by these families, before they know it, only Ada and Jamie are left on this train. And they end up being brought to this house by this woman named Susan. And Susan doesn't like children. And here's Ada and, and Jamie and there's Susan. And yeah. And they have to figure out how they're going to live together and how what they're going to do in order to survive. And they're going to need each other more than what they could ever imagine. This is the first in a duology. There is a sequel. It's already out. So good. I love the second one. But this one's just oh, a little bit better. But this is The War That Saved My Life by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. Okay. This is Beware the Power of the Dark Side by Tom Engelberger. Tom Engelberger is a Virginia author. If you love a good comedy, if you love humor in your stories, you will love Tom Engelberger. But I'm taking it just a little bit serious because if there's something else I love, it is Star Wars. And this combines Star Wars and one of my favorite authors. So how can we not talk about it? So what this book does is it explores the movie Return of the Jedi in book form. And usually I'm not into this type of stuff. I mean, like if I could just watch the movie, I know what's going to happen. I'm, I'm not, I don't need to read the book. Oh, you need to read this. Now, the other two, like episode four and five, New Hope and Empire Strikes Back, there are books for those two. But what I love about these books, especially this one, is you may think you know what's going on. You think if you know the movie, but this takes you even just a little bit deeper. It gives you a little more character development. It gives you a little more background and information on the places that are featured, like Endor, like for, for Return of Jedi, or, you know, the second Death Star that they're rebuilding. Now, highly encourage it. If you love Star Wars, this is a must read. If you love a good humor series, this is like Tom Engelberg does the Origami Yoda books. Highly recommend those as well. This is Beware the Power of the Dark Side. And our last one for today is Bloody Times by James Swanson. 
love James Swanson, especially if I want a good history nonfiction that will keep me turning the pages. And that's exactly what this one does. This one starts right on that fateful night when Abraham Lincoln is assassinated by John Wilkes Booth at Ford Theater. Now, if you know anything about history, you know that happened. But what this book does that a lot of times in history doesn't happen is then it picks right up, right when that event starts. And it follows the two weeks that come after, which is one of the most crazy bananas adventure times filled in our history that we don't even read about. And this, but this book does that. So what this book does is it takes three, three storylines that happen in real life and they follow them and see how they all kind of converge and depend on each other. Through this book, we learn about the manhunt that takes place for John Wilkes Booth, which wasn't easy, didn't just happen. Two, the Civil War is over. So they decide they need to go arrest Jefferson Davis, who's the president of the, the Confederacy. He's on the run though too. Not going to be as easy as what they think it's going to be. And three, they have to get Abraham Lincoln's body back to Illinois in order for it to be for it to be buried. You know what? It's going to be way harder than what they think too, because you know what? There are some people that they don't want that body making it back. Okay. What this what this does? It's going to be nonstop action. You are going to learn so much. I could not put this one down. If you want to read about parts of history that you normally don't get to read about, this is it. Okay, highly recommend this one. This is Bloody Times by Jane Swanson. So these are just six of our favorite authors, but I can promise you we have way more than these. We have more, way more favorite authors. So I encourage you to come on out, check out one of these, or maybe check out another book by one of these authors because they've written other books already too. Or we can help you and introduce you to maybe another one of our favorite authors. Or you might even make the chance to make your own favorite author. I hope you tune back next week when we have a whole new middle grade book spotlight. And I hope you have an amazing week.